real? Nah, it's just a simulated world. Everything here just appears larger than life. Makes it easier for surgeons like me to study how different organisms work, both on the inside and out. That's William Beaumont, the father of human digestion. Oh dear, do you digest humans? Argo. <laughs> nah, I'm just famous for doing extensive studies on the human digestive system. The digestive system? I remember studying about it in school. It's made out of several organs inside your body that takes the food you eat, breaks it down, and turns it into energy. That's right, and I'm an expert on the subject. Great, maybe you will know how we can make our friend feel better. He's been having a bad stomach ache. First, we need to understand how the digestive system works. Follow me, and we'll take a trip down the food tube. It's a real maze in there, but with me around, you guys have nothing to worry about. We'll go through all nine organs that form the digestive system. Great. As long as we get out of here soon to stop any further stomach ache or impending diarrhea. Well then, you have less time than that. The diarrhea can strike as quickly as one hour after a person eats something that will upset the stomach. This is Elizabeth Blackwell, the first female doctor in America. Oh. Ooh. That does look really fun. Statues. Teeth! We're in the mouth, the very first organ of the digestive system. Uh-oh. I think it's about to... Bite! Stay calm. The teeth play a part in grinding up one's food, while the salivary glands produce saliva to break down the food even more. Uh-oh! Saliva? Relax, little fella. We'll be all right. Uh. Whoa. 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 What's that? Can we exit there instead? That is the epiglottis. It covers the opening of your windpipe when you swallow. It's to ensure that food doesn't accidentally enter your lungs and cause you to choke. Right, so I guess we don't want to go there then. So where do we want to go then? Right down there. This is pretty exhilarating. Why are the walls closing in on us? This is the esophagus, sweetie. It's about 10 inches long that connects the mouth to the stomach. The walls squeeze in to keep the food moving. <gasps> what a crummy situation. It sure looks bad. Stop telling us how bad the situation is. How can we get out of it? Just rock the boat. Huh? huh? I can't watch. Finally. Whoa. Welcome to the stomach, the source of my early discovery. What did you discover? I had a patient with a hole in his stomach. This gave me a window to observe the process of digestion. Back in my time, people believed that the stomach was the one grinding the food, but I found out that it was actually the stomach acid doing all the work. Are we safe here then? Not with those around. Bacteria! They are tiny germs that can enter your body and cause an infection. Do you kids have any weapons in your suits? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
laser guns. Hmm. Pew. Tyler's doing okay. Maybe we should check on him? There goes nothing. Hey, Marie. How are you feeling, Tyler? My stomach is turning, so I'm about to drink a glass of milk to soothe it down. Stop! Milk will only irritate your stomach further. You should stay away from all dairy products. <gasps> Uh-oh. What's happening? I can't even see you guys. We're not asking you. All right, Tyler, don't drink any milk until we get back. Warm water is good. Fine. You guys better hurry. That does not look good. Oh, blimey. The ride must have heard us talking about the milk. Now it's demonstrating what happens when milk gets in the tummy. Witches? It triggers the cells in the stomach lining to produce more acid, causing the stomach to be irritated. What else irritates the stomach? Fried food, spicy food, oily food, all these are harder to digest and may make your stomach feel worse. Can we get out of here then? Hold on to the boat. We're heading to the small intestine. It feels like we've been in this narrow tube for hours. Well, an adult's small intestine is 22 feet long. That's about 6.7 meters long. Whoa. Whoa! But how does it all fit in here? It must be magic! Abracadabra! <laughs> well, it's all bundled up, so it doesn't take up much space. So what happens here in the small intestine? The small intestine digests one's lunch even further to help you absorb nutrients into your bloodstream. And it does all this with a little help from his friends. These other organs produce juices into the small intestine to help with the digestion. The pancreas secretes juices that digest fats and protein. The liver produces bile, which helps absorb fats. While the gallbladder stores extra bile. How long does food stay in here for? Food stays here for about four hours. During this time, it becomes a thin, watery mixture. And just like in the esophagus, the muscles in the small intestinal walls squeeze the food to keep it moving. Now, where to next? On to something bigger. Presenting the large intestine. Ooh. <clears throat> Ugh, what's that smell? Ooh, I think I can see the exit from here. But it seems to be covered by some brown rocks. Yes, at five feet long, the large intestine is much shorter than the small intestine. Why do they call this the large intestine? It's called the large intestine because it's much thicker around. Hmm. <laughs> Why is it so much drier here? Well, the large intestine absorbs water and the last bits of nutrients from your lunch. Hmm. And what are these rocks? That's poop, also known as the waste material that's left behind after your body has absorbed all the nutrients. No wonder this place smells. Let's get out of here. The smell is getting worse. It seems to be coming from over there. What is that place? Let's just say it's a wasteland. Yes, that place is kind of a dump. Hmm. Oh no, we have to go through the anus, don't we? The anus? It's where all our poop comes out from, Mago. That does not sound like a fun place to go to. Ready? Sit tight, guys. It's gonna be a crappy ride. <laughs> uh. Oh! <laughs> I need a bath. I need a new body. I need to go through that ride again. Oh, yeah. Boy, do you guys stink. Bob! I'm glad I didn't join you. So, how was it? 
We learned a lot about how the digestive system works. Now we just need to know how to apply what we know to help Tyler. Good day. Ooh. Hello. 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 Welcome. Good day, everyone. Wait a minute. I know this. This is Mount Rushmore. But the faces... Well, yes, some of us are dead and some are still alive. But as pioneers and leaders of our field... You're certainly deserving of having your faces immortalized on the largest side of mountains. You stole my line. I apologize, Mr. Darwin. This is Marie and Argo. Hello. This is Mr. Charles Darwin, best known for the theory of evolution. Oh, it's always Darwin. Well, you could say he was naturally selected. Oh, be gracious, you all. I can't help being popular. I support you, Darwin. Boo! Mr. Darwin, my friends here have a question you happen to be an expert on. Life cycle. The series of changes that a living thing goes through from the beginning of its life until death. Ah, yes. Let's start with a simple idea of what it is. For a mammal, let's say, a living thing is born, gets bigger, some go on to have children, then die. That is a life cycle. Now, let's take a look. Oh, wow. Fetus. When the egg of the mother is fertilized by the sperm of the father, an embryo is formed inside the mother's womb. Wait, the baby isn't there? How does it eat or drink? At this stage, the fetus is totally dependent on the mother. It's not able to eat, drink, or breathe on its own. After nine months, a baby is born. Then it becomes a child who slowly learns to talk and walk. Ah, oh, now I think the next one resembles me more. Why, yes. An adolescent usually refers to teenagers. Humans go through puberty here. What is puberty? What happens? I think I can answer this one. Of course, go ahead. It's when our bodies start to change. Body hair, voice changes, shape of body, etc. Very good. Uh, teenagers go on to become adults, like your parents, and then elderly, like your grandparents. At this stage, our bodies and eyesight start to weaken. Skin gets wrinkled, many get white hair, and many die at this stage. What I really want to know is why. Why do people have to die? Well, my little one, nothing lasts forever. Change really is the only constant. So life cycles keep on going, and new human beings are given a chance to create new lives for themselves. You don't belong here. This is the flower section. You clearly belong in the mammal section. You to be decided. And my, what a beautiful flower. Oh, Bob? <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Dr. Linnaeus, we came to learn about taxonomy. Well, then you came to the right place. Whoa. Everything on the planet can be divided into living and non-living things. Who can tell me the four categories of living things? Plants, animals, fungi, and bacteria. What is bacteria? A bacteria are the smallest living things. They are called microorganisms because they can only be seen under a microscope. Bacteria feed on other living things. Some bacteria make you healthy, but some make you sick. That's a uh, poo poo. Ew. A fungi is a microorganism too. Mold, yeast, and mushrooms. All fungi. What was that? It was probably an animal. There are six kinds of them, you know. Amphibians, birds, fish, insects, mammals, reptiles. Amphibians live on land and in water. When they're on land, they breathe like everyone else. But when they're underwater, they absorb oxygen through their skin. 
Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> uh, birds have feathers, wings, and beaks. Birds can fly. Well, I don't know what Mr. Penguin and Mr. Ostrich would have to say about that. Fish have bodies covered with scales and healthy and delicious. <laughs> Fish breathe underwater through their gills and have fins to propel them through the water. Insects have three pairs of legs and a pair of feelers to help them sense their surroundings, like antennae. Their bodies are divided in three parts. Most mammals have hair on their bodies. His name is Harry. <laughs> <laughs> but some mammals don't have hair. Look at Flippy the dolphin here. Mammals give birth to live young and produce milk to feed them. Only two mammals lay eggs. The platypus and echidna. Do aliens lay eggs? Reptiles sure do. So if aliens look anything like these, they might. Lizards, alligators, snakes, turtles, egg-laying machines. Well, except viviparous snakes like boa constrictors and green anacondas. These give birth to live young. And that's everything. Oops, I forgot about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs? Yeah. Oh!